There are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and the truth. And not one of us is lying. Memories shared serve each one differently. This quote comes from American film producer Robert Evans, who is known for his work The Godfather, The Sun Also Rises, and Chinatown. This quote, to me, speaks on the truth of opposing perspectives. To me, it means that we each have our own personal experiences of the same story, and our personal experiences can affect how we view the outcome of the situation as a whole. This quote rang deep to me from an event that occurred about a month ago between me and another friend. It was around four o'clock in the morning and I get a phone call from a friend who will call Sarah. Now, because I was angry and tired that Sarah had woken me up, I turned my phone on vibrate and immediately went back to sleep. However, a few hours later, I get woken up to another phone call from a friend who will call Sam. I answered this time and Sam immediately asked me in a frantic tone, did you hear what happened to Sarah? I immediately sat up in my bed and asked her, no, is Sarah okay, did something happen? And that's when she told me that Sarah was missing and she had not been seen since the night before. I immediately hung up the phone and checked my notifications to find that I had nine missed phone calls from Sarah. I immediately called her back and found her mom on the other end of the line asking in a terrified voice if I had any possibility, any idea where Sarah was or where she might possibly be. I told her no and I immediately hung up the phone and an immense amount of guilt washed on my shoulders because I felt that maybe if I had possibly answered those phone calls the night before, I could have done something and she might not have went missing. With a million thoughts circling my mind every minute, I decided the best thing to do was to take to my social media and post that she was missing. After a few hours of stress and no tips from others, I get a phone call from a number not listed in my contacts. Now thinking of the possibility that this might be Sarah, I, I immediately answer the phone. However, it wasn't Sarah, but in fact her little sister who called me crying, asking if I had any idea where she was if she was with me. And as tears began, to fill my eyes and my heart sank, I told her no, but I promised that if I had any idea as to where her whereabouts might be, that I would immediately call her and her mom back right away. Then as soon as I hung up the phone on her sister, I thought to myself, why not to call another friend of ours who will call Kim. Sarah and Kim were in fact very close and it hadn't dawned on me until that very moment. I called Kim praying of the possibility that she would answer. The first phone call, no answer. Second phone call, no answer as well. And the third call, she finally picked up. I sprung to my feet and immediately, asked, and immediately asked her if Sarah was at her house. A long period of silence goes by because I had actually woken her up by calling her and she answered, yes, she is. I stated, wait, Sarah is at your house. She's there at your house right now wanting to confirm that she was there at that very moment. And Kim replied back, yes, but don't tell nobody, okay? After we finished our phone call, I immediately hung up the phone and I called Sarah's mom to tell her that she was at Kim's house. Hearing a sigh of relief, her mom thanked me and she went to go find her daughter. I then texted Sam a very long rant, uh, telling her how Kim was an extremely irresponsible and horrible friend. She and I both agreed that, and both set our minds to think how could Kim possibly allow any of us to be worried? How could she allow any of us to not know where she was when she knew she was at her house the whole time? Unfortunately, being clouded with judgment and anger, I texted Kim and I verbally attacked her, asking her how she was okay with everything that she had put us through. We texted privately and she was very furious and answered in an angry tone that I didn't know the whole story about what happened that night. And that's when she told me that Sarah's parents had actually kicked her out of her house and because Sarah had no place to go, she called Kim on a motel phone and asked her if she could go to her house to stay there. Sarah, as soon as Sarah came to Kim's house, she told her everything that happened that night and asked her not to tell, not to say where she was to anybody because she finally felt that she was in an environment where she was safe. Then they fell asleep and didn't realize that Sarah was actually reported missing until I had called them. And then that's when they found all the social media posts, all the phone calls, all the text messages. Now I don't regret calling Sarah's mom whatsoever, but I felt terrible due to the fact that I, that I acted too hastily and assumed that Kim was an irresponsible and horrible person. She provided Sarah a place to stay where she was warm and had food, giving her comfort and safety when she had no one else to when she had no one else to get it from. Kim was not a terrible friend, but in fact someone you could truly go to for any problem you had. But unfortunately she and I haven't spoken since. This experience was a life lesson for me going into adulthood, teaching me that as a young adult we should learn to listen and recognize that there are many different perspectives to a situation. And instead of attacking a person or judging them on their supposed actions, Acknowledge that their side of the story is just as equally important as yours and as somebody else's. Likewise, don't ever assume anything as your thoughts can harm others. So I'm here to tell you before you judge somebody, get to know them and their side of the story. 
you might just be helping him out by doing so.